Hey everyone, welcome to this Houdini tutorial on data optimization techniques. In this tutorial, we will explore how to reduce cache size by up to 90% using optimization tricks. So let's dive in. Let's take test animated geometry. So Craig will be the best. And I don't want shader. Yep. So if I immediately click over here, it's packed. So let's unpack. Cool. So let's set up file cache to check the data size. And here I prefer using this explicit file path. And I want to create this cache folder. Cool. So let's just cache this. Let's rename this as well. Crack geo v1. Let's save to disk. It's cached now. Let's check data size. So currently it's 1.77 GB. So here let's understand what's happening. So currently it's caching for 240 frames. So file cache is caching this character on each frame and 1.77 GB is the combined data of that. And let's just check how we can optimize this. Before we move on to optimization technique, it's important to understand that geometry should have constant polygon count. So to check that you can do this. So as you can see, it's not changing. And this technique won't work on changing polygon count. Yep. So here's the plan. So instead of caching this on each frame, I want to cache on single frame and all is dependent on this position P. That's how it's moving on each frame so instead of caching this geometry on each frame i will store only position data of each frame so let's just see how we can do that so i'll type point triangle let's rename this store p yeah so here i'll just create vector value of that store So this is the position data it's stored now but it's not linked to any frame number or something so here we have to mention frame number as well so this is the just current data and that's not really i want so here i will just use back tick and type dollar f now if you check this it's with frame now so currently it's 120 and 56 so this is working and now i want to remember the previous data meaning the 50 frames over here if i'm here it should remember this entire frame range and to remember that we have to solve that previous data right so we will use solver so what this does it will just remember previous frame data and we will keep adding the current frame data in it and let's just check how we can do that it's very simple we can just use copy and as it's moving so we will use this as input and here okay but before that let's just check what output we are getting so it will read this first frame only so that's why we have to use this to drive that attribute over here specifically animated geometry yep it's working and now i want to transfer this store p and here i will just use asterisk so it will read everything and let me just check let me show you right so we have all this position and that's what we want so let me just copy this and here I will just remove this and I want to use single frame it will be let's rename these as well and cache cool it's done and if I move it's static but if I middle click 
I have all those position and before checking size or something let's just restore that position I want this thing working so we will just use p equals yep it's working now but if you notice this normals are not working so we will just recompute normals and we will remove so here also we will use same way cool it's working well but let's just check the data size so here it's 1.77 gb and if i open it's 199 mb only it's 90 percent reduction and that's a huge And as this is not reading on each frame, this is faster to load. And let's just check that as well. So if I record this, let me go to next frame. It's reading this. And now let me test this. Record. Yep, there is a difference in loading speed as well. So this is more faster. Cool, so that's it. So let's go one level up. Let's check how we can achieve this using warp. So currently, if you notice that we are storing this on each attribute, but in Vax or warp, we have function called arrays. So if you want to learn Vax and arrays and all those function, I will highly recommend to watch Vax Gen Scary tutorial series and it has covered everything in depth and just to simplify what is arrays so it just store all this data in this way so currently it's following this but we can just convert this into this thing and let's just see how we can do that solver again i'll just connect this and we will use warp so this is the previous frame and this is active frame and we will import this data. Let me use bind. So here I'll use bind to create attribute and we will just use same store P and here I have to mention vector array as position is vector. And similar way I have to bind export as well store p vector so i want to import yep so how can i add that attribute over here so for that we have option append so what it will do it will just read this value and if i go to this next frame it will add that value on each frame let me show you if i go to geometry spreadsheet currently we have one frame value if i go to next frame it's two and three so that way but remember in data size it won't be that much affected it may be point zero point five optimized or something but it won't affect that much cool so it's saved so let's copy these oops Let's just copy this over here and you can turn this off we don't want that and it's store p we will use array warp cool so let's just save this Cool. so it's one frame but let's just check data size so it's 
you can see it was one one ninety nine MB, but now it's one point just minor difference. But this is well organized. If you see over here, it's it's stored under one attribute only. Cool. So now let's read that. Here, read position. Here also we will just type store p and it will be again vector array and how to read that again so for that i will just use get array element i'll just use this array and position so if i move this it will work so i can just connect this index to frame it's working and you can see it's dotted line over here so we can just use flow to integer for better workflow yep and let's just compare it and there is some offset so why because array start from zero and our frame is one so it's better to subtract one value over here it's fixed now cool so here also i will just add normal and i will delete that single attribute only now let's just reset this now let's compare everything so this is first and this one is second so i always keep track of this data at the moment it's look like minor difference but if you're working on really large scale then it will give drastic so as you can see this is well optimized so i will go with this one and we have explored the warp way and now it's time to explore wrangle way as well so here again i will use solver so i'm just showing you other techniques as well so it's similar so here i'll use wrangle yep so first i need to import this value over here so I'll just simply type vector to call that value over here import p to import it from second input we have to call it input number one so let's just use point it's lowercase point and here it will show me how to input that so it's geometry and string which is p and point so here you can use at pitinum so let's just use this one handle and i will use p in string and at pitinum cool it's import and i'll just use append over here here also you can check how we can use this so it's array and value so here i can just define array to define array it's a vector so we have to type v first and these brackets and i can just use at store p that's it comma and i can just use that input p yep it will store that position let's just cross check let's run this off go next frame yep it's working well so it's similar way only but in vex cool let's just save this so vex version 1 save to disk
Yep. It's done. So it's similar only. And let's just check how we can read that. So it's a bit tricky over here. Oops. So let's type position. And here we have to mention store p but it will give an error so to read that value we have to create these brackets over here as well and we can just use dollar f and remember we have to use minus one cool it's working let's just copy paste this over here And if you go one level up, you can use this as well. So you can just create this OTL where you can just connect these. It will auto figure out start frame end frame and it will just keep everything clean. And if I press to save to disk, it will auto run everything. So I can just use this as an OTL wherever I want. Yep. Cool. So we can use this in many ways like we can use this in RBD and we can use this over flip as well if point count is not changing. We can use this in grains as well. You don't have to cache grains and it's really heavy right. So in those cases we can use this one. Hope you like this technique and see you next time.